From coast to coast, even out in Hawaii, stores that were recently filled with bottled water, baby wipes, and toilet paper wiped empty. Showed up today and it's just chaos. There's a huge line to get toilet paper. I can't even spare a square. These days, it seems no matter where you go, you can't get your hands on toilet paper. This morning, lines outside a grocery store in Central Florida with anxious shoppers. I can't believe what people are doing inside. Shelves are empty. This has been an unprecedented year, to say the least. But just as it all began, America was thrown into a toilet paper emergency. With 75% of Americans suddenly working from home, the nation asked, but will we have enough toilet paper? TP flew off the shelves at grocery stores and retailers everywhere. Beyond the pandemic, the nation had a number two problem on its hands. But in the end, it was the creative problem solving and the ingenuity of modern manufacturers who stepped up to the plate and saved our butts. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and this is Creators Wanted. The things we've used to wipe our bums haven't always been ultra soft. Moss, shells, stones, corn cobs have all, bad pun alert, reported for duty at one point or another. The ancient Greeks, well, they went next level petty and used pieces of pottery inscribed with enemies' names. Thankfully, we've come a long way, although it wasn't until 1930 that toilet paper was manufactured splinter-free. Oh, yikes. Since the dawn of the perforated TP rolls we know and love, we've seen a few shortages. The 70s had a couple of incidents. First, a union strike turned TP into a status symbol in Hawaii. Then, Johnny Carson made a joke about a TP shortage that didn't quite land, causing an actual TP shortage. Of all the shortages we have, there's a gasoline shortage. You know what else is disappearing from the supermarket shelves? Toilet paper. Ha ha ha, you can laugh now. The Scott spokesman said unfounded rumors of a shortage has caused excessive demand at retail outlets. But never, never have we seen anything like the pandemic-induced TP crisis of 2020. Like almost everything else that year, it was unprecedented. A three-part problem created the perfect storm. First came the tsunami of demand. By March 23rd, toilet paper was out of stock at 70% of U.S. grocery stores, including online sellers. Then there was a displacement caused by lockdowns. We still needed the same amount of TP, but where we needed it, that changed. With offices, schools, and businesses shut down, people needed as much as 40% more toilet paper at home. Couldn't we just take the toilet paper we were using in public and use it at home? Well, not exactly. As it turns out, there are two types of toilet paper, consumer and commercial, and they're not made the same way. Professor of supply chain practice, Patrick Penfield of Syracuse University has some insight. So a lot of people might be thinking, hey, why can't we just use the commercial for the consumer? They're different. There are two different types of products, uh, two different types of um, materials, two different types of packaging, two different types of distribution channels. So it just wouldn't work from that vantage point. That's why it didn't happen. So the toilet paper manufacturers realized that they couldn't sell commercial grade toilet paper to consumers. There was no problem with the toilet paper manufacturing process. It all had to do with demand. And so uh, one thing about toilet paper, it's uh, very consistent from a demand standpoint. So uh, the toilet paper manufacturers are producing almost the same amount all the time, which, which is great. It's actually pretty you know, easy uh, to, to forecast. Unfortunately, when the, the spike hit, we just didn't have enough toilet paper. So we saw this social phenomenon uh, called panic buying. There were people in supermarkets and then there were these social cues. People were loading up on on toilet paper and then so unfortunately one week in March there was over 700% uh, increase in sales in in the U.S. from a a supermarket standpoint. I think the shock is over and I think that's been the the, was the big issue last year and I think the toilet paper manufacturers have taken the needed steps within their supply chains to make sure that there's more than enough on the shelves so I don't see in the foreseeable future any issues with toilet paper again 
I think that manufacturing is, is vital and extremely important to the United States. Um, so uh, this is one of the things that we really need to spend more time on, on developing. And so I think for us, this could be an opportune time where, again, we can see what happened because of COVID. We've been seeing this uh, as an opportunity. We might be able to bring stuff back and actually see a renaissance you know, within manufacturing and actually be able to do more manufacturing than we ever have, have done before. And I think that would be a, an outstanding opportunity for the United States. Heidi Brock, president and CEO of the American Forest and Paper Association, can give us some insight on the true size and scope of the paper manufacturing industry and how ultimately they were the heroes responsible for coming to the rescue in this situation. So the pandemic really put a spotlight on the paper products industry and I think for many manufacturing sectors because we produce essential products that we all rely on for modern life. So with stay-at-home orders and travel advisories increasing, consumers started stocking up and they would go to the store and they would see empty shelves, which led to a perception that there was a shortage. Yet, in fact, our industry never stopped working. We reached record rates of production in February and March of 2020. To the credit of the approximately 950,000 individuals in our country who make up the forest products industry, we supplied record levels of tissue products while safely going to work throughout the pandemic. One of the first challenges we had was really what we were seeing in the media because what we were seeing in the media did not um, sync up with what we were experiencing in the manufacturing operations. And I remember seeing one headline in the New York Times, which was posing the question, is there really a toilet paper shortage? And those kinds of questions and concerns were um, contributing to Americans' rush to purchase tissue product, products, including toilet paper and paper towels, really in unprecedented quantities. And so in response to the media coverage, we worked quickly with our members to inform the public with reliable fact-based information. Just as we do 365 days a year, we were looking to really reassure the public that the tissue industry was responding. One week after the New York Times story asking that question, is there a toilet paper shortage? There was a follow-up article and this one was in Bloomberg. And I will just, I will never forget this headline because it read, toilet paper ma makers to US consumers, we've got this. And that really felt like the spirit that we were bringing to that challenge. From the consumer's perspective, they were seeing empty shelves, but I think what we were all learning is a lot more about the resilience and the need for resilience in our supply chains. So the most important issue was for us to get those products to the shelves, to the consumers, so that they could get those products home and use them. I think that the, there was such a sense of importance that the products that our industry was producing, there was pride, there was a sense of responsibility, there was just so much energy in terms of a sense of we can do this, that we've got this, but also a real recognition that the work that they were doing really mattered. I sense such a great amount of pride, but a real commitment to getting it done. Let's look back at what the tissue sector accomplished in an environment when things were so uncertain. And I have to say, I think it is such a credit to the people that work in this industry that the tissue mills manufactured nearly 700,000 tons of tissue in March of 2020. That was more than any other month since we began tracking this data. And U.S. tissue manufacturers also reached a milestone for daily production. And AFMPA members delivered more than 22,000 tons of tissue per day, which was an all-time high for the industry. But getting into the real nitty-gritty of what it was like to be boots on the ground in the moment of that toilet paper surge is Senior Vice President of Product at Procter & Gamble, Rick McLeod. In our U.S. operations, it's probably the first week of March, I recall we started to see some empty shelves. 
uh, as consumers were responding to the pending pandemic. And this would be something similar to what we would see in a very localized event, like a hurricane coming. However, this was now very widespread, and you started to see the shelves emptying across the network. And accordingly, our teams responded exceptionally well, being able to, in a very resilient way, cope up with that initial demand. I think what was very different in the case of the pandemic, however, is this was sustained and it, and it kept going. And that's that's where we really realized that, you know, by the end of March, this is uh, a different uh, different scenario altogether. As the pandemic hit, our, our organization responded incredibly well. Almost immediately, production output was increased significantly. The first and for foremost thing we had to do is make sure that our operations operated with the absolutely utmost uh, safety and securities. But then it really is turning to what P&G does very well, which is rely on the capability of the individual at the operating team level. Uh, with leadership support, as horrible as the pandemic has been, it's really brought out uh, a, a clear realization that when you trust people and when you give them autonomy to do what they are trained to do, they deliver exceptional results. Uh, manufacturing uh, evolution has been definitely accelerated uh, through the pandemic, and uh, it's it's certainly something that that I believe is going to benefit uh, our industry as a whole. Manufacturing is here to stay, and uh, it's an important part of our economy for sure, and for the improving the daily lives of individuals and consumers around the world. Some of the best paying jobs are in manufacturing. And so if, if I was a young person, this is something that I'd really look at because this is really where you can make more money, there's more opportunities, and it's, it's a great way to, to make a living. Manufacturing is something I think that is a hidden secret sometimes with, within the United States, but those are the great paying jobs. Those are the jobs that you want to uh, hopefully be able to secure. You are gaining skills in creating products. These might be engineering skills or electrical skills, a wide variety of skills that are required to manage a complex operation. But guess what? The paper industry has hundreds of plants across the country. We are a top 10 manufacturer in 45 states. So there's abundant opportunity if you need to pick up and move and transfer somewhere. There are skills that you can take with you and these jobs are living wage jobs that allow people to live a wonderful life in the community of their choice. Throughout the pandemic, we got to know all different types of first responders. Hospital workers, nurses, EMTs, but the creators, the modern manufacturers are right there with them, bringing the technical skill, experience, and innovation to help the country when help is needed most. Now, we didn't have a toilet paper crisis on our 2020 bingo card, but then again, we didn't have a pandemic on it either. Fortunately, manufacturers in America did what they've always done. They rolled up their sleeves and solved the problem. To the manufacturers who stepped up, thank you. For more information, be sure to visit creatorswanted.org.